Hello, and here we are with a research software hour on Git conflicts. I'm Richard Darst, and here with me is... And for you? And... And how long was Yeah. And hi, everybody watching live, and hi, also everybody watching the recording later. <laughs> I think this is number 22? Yes, or um, 23, or well, something like that. Yes. And also, before we start, I want to say thanks to Marijn for providing the intro jingle which, uh, for the show. So that's really awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah. And we will, we will use that as an intro song. And today we will talk about uh, Git conflicts. So we will create conflicts and we will solve them. We will see a couple of nice tools and tricks for conflict resolution in Git. Yeah. So if you're watching live, you should know how we tend to do questions. We have this, um, instead of the Twitch chat, we have these HackMD notes, which you see here. And... And can you show where to, where to reach it from? Yeah, I guess I'll paste that into the chat. Let me find or it. Or maybe I can, I can screen share actually the Twitch itself. Maybe it will be weird. <laughs> Okay, it's ah, um, the HackMD is in the chat and also in the channel description. And the way this works is you should always go to the bottom for questions. And then if you have a question, then make a bullet point question and then someone will either answer here or we'll bring it up directly on the um Radovan as he's working so and, and in the second d on top there are already some bullet points so there is like a rough plan of what we want to talk about but let's see we, we maybe we will deviate and do some excursions no problem also this is a bit of a like a memory help for <laughs> me and us of what we want to talk about yeah maybe i can should i grab the screen and yeah so uh, the screen is yours please share okay just a sec okay sharing the hack and okay. and as a starting point so this is about git conflicts and maybe let's start with what is a conflict in git and um, I have created this example repository, which we will look at. And in fact, you can, if you like, you can clone it and try it also on your own terminal. So let's visit this one here. And this is a repository with, it's like a restaurant menu. So there are a couple of files, starters, main course, desserts and drinks. And oh, there is a main branch, but then two other branches were created. So there is one branch called improve desserts, and there is one branch called improve starters. Mm -hmm. And I think in food is the best way to get conflict. If we talk about food, <laughs> show yes. the best. Subject. Yeah. Yes. So there were two chefs, and they they were supposed to improve. One was supposed to improve the starters. Yeah, let's have a look at the starters, how it was at the beginning. So there is a menu saying, so you can choose spiced salmon or summer tomato and herb salad. And to see maybe what happened then is, okay, let's, let's ask this question a bit later. Is a conflict good or bad? We will argue that this is maybe pretty good. I want to show you what happened with this repository, both on GitHub and also on GitLab. So on GitHub, I can go here on insights network and it's a bit, maybe a little bit tiny, but here are the three branches. So there is main, improve desserts, improve starters, 
I think it's actually maybe a little bit easier to see if I look at it on GitLab. So it's the same repository. The same repository. But here, so we started with, with a menu. And then somebody worked on improving starters. So there was a commit. And in this commit, somebody added more starters. Let's see it. Let's look at this commit. Yeah, so there are two more starters here on the menu. Good. But then uh, the person found out, well, the, the title for the main course menu could be better. So improve that too. Here. So instead of main, it was main course. But then uh, this programmer also discovered that there was a typo in the desserts menu. So this person wasn't really supposed to work on desserts, but found a problem, fixed it on this branch. Uh, let's look at the commit. Yeah, so instead of ice cream, it should be ice cream. So it's a, it's a good change. So this happened on the improved status branch. And then well, now there is this improved desserts branch. What happened there? There, somebody discovered a typo in the main course menu. Let's look. Yeah, vegan red curry instead of curry. Um, so good change. And then also some improving in the, the sales menu. Let's look. Also, this person discovered this was not good ice cream and instead changed lemon ice cream and also added an apple pie. And now what do you expect will happen when we try to merge these two? So what we will try, we will test merging these two together. Maybe the reasonable thing would be to merge them into main. One, one of them and then the other, the other one. And in this demo, uh, so we, we maybe expect, so what is a conflict? A uh, conflict is, on two different branches, the same file got modified in the same place. And I think we have a feeling that we expect there will be a problem in the desserts menu. So there is a conflict because these two branches modified it in two different ways. Do you expect any program to be able to solve this for you automatically? Um, Mm -hmm. Well, one could do some machine learning, but at least I'm not aware of any program yeah. that would just decide. So. Yeah, like this is like to me, this is not a computer test. This is two people have done different things, and then someone has to decide which of the two sites to take. It's not like uh, editing two different things that there is one necessarily right way to do stuff. Yes. But all, all the conflicts are uh, cannot be solved automatic, automatically, or is there are they any some conflicts could be solved automatically? Yes. Hmm. Well, and I think I will, I will show later. Sometimes we there is a conflict, but we we know already which which of the two we prefer, mm -hmm. and we will show how we can do that sort of automatically. Then, if yeah. we without deciding we can just say that i prefer this or this one or the other one yeah i guess what i was trying um, to get at is some conflicts are in the meaning and some are in the syntax or something like that and if it's in the syntax then oh yes. like you know yeah all right yes. there's that but like here someone decided someone fixed or one of my class examples let's say someone changes it to lemon ice cream and someone changes it to coconut ice cream, for example, yes. then which one is the right one? Well, the two people who did this have to get together and talk and decide what the outcome is going to be. It's not so, a like, yeah. So Git doesn't really understand and doesn't try to really understand uh, the meaning of it. It looks mm -hmm. at portions of a file and it looks at differences. But we will also see is that these two branches modify the main course but we will see that they modify them in different portions and there will not be a conflict. So this was carefully prepared. I also want to show, show you how it looks in the terminal. 
and for this I'm using this alias for git graph. So git graph is not a git command, it's it's an alias that we have defined and you can find it in the HackMD. But let me let me clone this project to the laptop. And here I can do this git graph. And okay, I have these three branches, improve starters, improve the certs main. What else can we do? We can have a look at what what was the change on improve starters. Git diff this commit and this branch. Mm. This is actually interesting, name only, let's try. It will only show me which files. And if I remove it, it will show me what, what is the actual change. And I can do that same thing on the other, other branch. Uh, one, one more thing that I can show, git graph stat. It's interesting, maybe. I wonder whether it will be easy to read or how difficult to read, but it it shows yeah. for which each commit it shows which file is modified. But let's go back to. So what you're doing here, you're first trying to understand what the changes are. Yes. Like you want to know what each side thought separately so you can understand what you would do to put them together somehow. Right. I mean, yeah. here you need a, a, a lot of knowledge when you, when you merge. The person merging needs to understand uh, the content of the code. It's in terms of, I mean, if you have a, a scientific code, for instance. Yeah. Possibly, yes. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, they will, I mean, this person will have to decide, for instance, which algorithm is the best or. Right. Good. Yeah. And that's why I always say if you're so doing. Should we do it alone? Well, so there often needs to be communication, and I think we all yeah. emphasize it here that uh, we may need to really talk about it. So what what I showed there, and when later when we talk about ours and theirs, the ours, the changes that we that we name ours are the changes on on the present branch, and theirs are changes on the other branch. And of course, it then depends on our perspective. And when do we expect a conflict? Um, I expect a conflict when, when the same portion of the file is modified in two different ways on two branches. And in our case, it's the it's the desserts. So the two branches modified in two different ways. Uh, the, the other situation where you can, where we expect a conflict is if one branch modif modifies a file and the other branch removes it, mm -hmm. then Git will also not mm -hmm. let me merge it. I mean, maybe, maybe we could do this at the end, sort of classify the different kinds of conflicts, like changing mm -hmm. the same thing to two different meanings doing two different fixes to the same thing, which can be both used, like fixing two typos in the same line. Or, mm. yeah, but let's talk about this at the end and go on and see some examples first. Yes. Should we maybe try, I wonder whether we have this in the right order. Um, also, how to minimize conflicts, should we talk about it later or now? Maybe let's see one example first. Let's see a conflict. I guess. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And then later we can talk about configuration and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's let's create a conflict. And for this I will so I'm now the restaurant maintainer. And I want to merge these good developments into the main menu. So I will start with should we start with starters? I will, I will check out these two branches so that I have them locally mm -hmm. first. 
Okay, check out improved starters. Okay, check out improved desserts. Not not absolutely necessary, but what I wanted to have is I wanted to have these three branches locally. I have now main, improved starters, improved desserts. I want to merge improved starters into main. For this, I will I will check out main. Uh, because when I merge, I always modify my present branch, never the other branch. So here yeah, you can maybe remind who is there and who is. Uh, yeah, right. Excellent. So ours will be now. Oh, this is our branch, and theirs will be the one that I'm merging. And the first merge will will work without problems, and it it really doesn't matter which one I select. I will start with this one. So I will now merge improve starters into main. It will modify main. Uh, and it, it asks you now to give a commit message. But this is a good one. Git merge improve starters, it's good. This worked. Let's have a look at, at the graph. So now. These three commits from improved starters got merged into into main, and there is the new merge commit over here. Mm -hmm. And now I want to merge the other branch, improved desserts, and there we expect trouble. Git merge, improved desserts, and this okay. is interesting. So it it had no trouble uh, merging the main course. There were two changes, but they were in different places. But it tried to merge the cells. It cannot do it. There is a conflict. So just uh, to uh, to tell us, if there if there are co many conflicts, does it stop on the first conflict? Or how does it work? No, it will. It will go through all of them. It will try to merge all the files. And if there were more conflicts, then I would see more conflicts over here. But it will show me all the conflicts that there are. In, my, in this case, there is only one. And the next thing I like to do in this case is git status. And it will it will stage all the files that where there was no conflict. And it will keep all the files where there, there is a conflict, it will keep them unstaged. Um, what I also like to do then is git diff because it will then show me what is the actual conflict. I guess this is what you should always do. Mm -hmm. Like before you try to fix something, you always spend a lot of time to understand what the problem actually is, I assume. So what does this mean? So what, what how to look at this? So this, uh... The interesting the thing that I look for are these markers here. So there is a conflict between these two. And there is one version wanted to change it to lemon ice cream. The other branch changed it to ice cream. But here the git diff is the diff between which version? Because uh, what we see in, in white is the previous version. Yes. And uh, what is in green is uh, the resulting conflict. Yes, although this thing is not a conflict, this part here. Yes. Oh, yes, you're right. So what we see here is the file, which is in a, in a, so, so Git has inserted these markers for me. The file is modified. So Git has modified this file, but it hasn't staged it. And it expects me now to decide which one do I, do I prefer. And then it expects me to stage it before we can go on. And this is this may be a little bit new, this part here. And this is a setting which I discovered very recently and I like it a lot. So it's this configuration. So if you, you know, if you don't have this configuration, and I didn't have it until like yesterday, then you don't see these two lines. But this is very useful because this will show me what was the original 
what was the original version? Where was it changed from? And this is what we see when you use a graphical uh, merge tool. Yes, I will show mm -hmm. that too. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So here I have several choices. What I can do is I can either try to try to fix it, or I can maybe I get overwhelmed and I don't want to do it now, or I need to talk to somebody. So maybe should I show how you can abort this thing if you don't want to go on? Yeah, why not? Try it again. I have a question. So, but what means when... abort? Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. What is an abort? Does it revert back or? It will bring me exactly how it the, was. The Okay, so we don't it, keep the main course. No, it will be, it will get me to the version before I did the merge. And we should get a question. Uh, what if you have uncommitted changes? With the abort? Yeah, like yeah, if you had uncommitted changes before you did the merge. Oh, before I did the merge. Yeah. Oh. Actually, I don't know either, but... I don't know. We can try it out. Yeah. What I usually say is if... But can you merge uh, if this is... Uh... I mean, uh, if, hmm. if the file is uh, is part of the uh, conflict or, or the merge, it, it, it will complain. Then it will complain. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it will not take it into account. Yeah. So I don't think... Revert. Yeah, I don't... We can try it out. I actually don't think it will let me merge before I do anything with the file. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good, I guess. Let's try it out. Let yeah, me I mean, this. Okay, well, maybe out. maybe we shouldn't get too off track. We can try it at the end if there's still time. But yeah. I think, well, I was hoping yeah. to make some sort of point. Like, if you do this, then uh, if, if you're merging and you think there might be conflicts, make sure everything is committed first. Otherwise, you might end in chaos. And something that's you can't just abort if it was that's somehow probably a good related. recommendation anyway mm -hmm. no, to, yeah. to, uh, to make sure you have everything clean mm -hmm. and committed before you start merging yeah mm -hmm. so maybe maybe I, I won't abort but if i if i would i would get exactly as it was before should i no okay why not well, you can show us what it does and you can uh, merge again yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Git git status, uh, git graph. The git graph looks like the, like it was before. Mm -hmm. And I can do again git merge. What was it? Improve desserts. Desserts. And I will again get the same conflict. And. Okay. And again, this thing, so and all how do we resolve it? Resolve yeah. it. Um, did, did you go over what, like, whenever you end up with this, uh, these lines, how do you read them? Like, what do you read first and second and so on? Yeah, so I normally look for for these things if it, because it could be, there could be several. Mm -hmm. So I look for these first. They divide at this part. Mm-hmm. But do you read this? I mean, the git diff, or the, I, I usually read directly the file. I open the file. Mm. Yeah, I can open it or with my because editor. Because now, uh, the especially thing. with oh, yeah. your edition, it. it's uh, you you still have what uh, what was the previous version. Yeah. yeah. So I open it up with with an editor, editor and okay. we see the same thing. So yeah. then I look for these. Yeah. And the way I read it is that if if you don't have this setting, then it will look like this. Mm -hmm. So this is how it very often looks. So you don't and know what changed in what, both of them. Yeah, you don't know what was there before. You just know that on my branch, it got changed to ice cream. Something got changed to ice cream. And on the other branch, which is improved desserts, something got changed to lemon ice cream. And with this extra configuration, I actually see what, what was the what was there before yeah and now i need to decide so so between the two let's say we take lemon ice cream. Lemon ice cream. i would say like whenever i look at this first i look at what it was originally like it's i, I try to be very structured about this so i look at what ah. was there originally and see what's on my side 
So in my head, I realized, okay, one person fixed a typo from the middle to ahead. And then one person seemed to fix the same typo and add an added lemon ice cream. Mm -hmm. So that's on the improved the search branch. So in my mind, these are compatible with each other. So yes, they but both I also think that oh, go ahead. Yeah, so they both made one change and then one of them made an extra change. So yes. it's easy. So this is clear which one I take. I will take the one with both changes. Yes, and also yes, we, yeah. here we assume that this was like the dessert expert was working on improving desserts. So probably mm -hmm. this person knew a bit more about where the dessert menu was going. Mm -hmm. Here yeah, the yes. starter person was was helpful. Yeah. And that's a good point, what you say about uh, like the naming of the branch and who is mm -hmm. doing what. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and of course this this is constructed, but it's also constructed that um, I think later I will try to make the point that it's maybe good to do not unrelated things on a branch because here the the starter chef was trying to be helpful, but mm -hmm. maybe I don't know should have maybe communicated with the other person with instead of modifying files mm -hmm. there. But here you see that I mean the branch name. This could have been small changes it could have been many it just already merged into the default branch so yeah like this can easily happen if two people see the problem at the same time and it's easier to spend five seconds to fix it than 30 seconds yes. to ask each other and worst case well right. you Is get... it... because then the... how, how much time can you spend on a conflict well in this case so like if I looked at this, so oftentimes when I see conflicts, I many times I don't resolve it. I'll take it and I'll say, okay, well, one side is clearly worse than the other. So then I just ignore the other side. Like to me, the conflict is not very scary, mm -hmm. but this is good philosophy. Let's talk about it at the end because I'm curious how yeah. this goes. So let's let's take the lemon ice cream. So then I need to remove everything that was added. I keep the version that I prefer. Mm -hmm. And then I save and leave the file. Git status. Oh git git doesn't know that I resolved the conflict. So I need to tell git here and it mm -hmm. gives me a hint. So I should stage it to mark resolution. Git add. So here, this is like a normal uh, addition mm -hmm. yes. to mm -hmm. a file. Yeah. It's all. Um, it really is. Yeah, I staged it. Mm -hmm. So and now you commit. I, now I. Now I'm ready to commit. Mm -hmm. So now I can do git commit. And it will. Again, prepare for me a commit message. I can modify it if I want to. It also shows me which files were conflicting. Mm -hmm. We can now decide do we want it to be in the commit message or not. Sometimes I like to have, to have it in the commit message. So it, it can be interesting in the history to see that there was a conflict. It's up to, up to us. And once I close the editor, now we merged. Git graph. Everything is merged nicely together into here in main, and we can have a look at what was the result then. Yeah, now we have uh, lemon ice cream in the desserts menu. Let me have a look here at the script. Um, so I mentioned this really good configuration. There are some other configurations which I find really useful, or maybe I will say something about it later. What should we do next? I think this or and their strategy was nice. Oh yeah. Or the visual so, tool, yeah. Or either. Okay, let's let's do it like that. I will do visual tools. Yeah. Then we look at this one, mm -hmm. and then we should look at how this looks on GitHub GitLab. Yeah. So again, let's. How do we get back to how it was before? Will we do that? Um, 
git Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Git. Git yeah, reset hard. We said how to. Origin name. Git check out. Desserts, opposite. Improve desserts. Git reset hard. Improve desserts. Git check out. Improve starters. Because this visual thing that is really nice, the visual tools. Mm -hmm. I actually never use a, I mean, I always use a visual tool for solving conflicts. Yes. Probably because I didn't even know your option that you showed how to add the, the previous. Yes. And so now we are back to how it was at the very start. I will now recreate a commit, uh, create a conflict, with merge. Let's keep the same order. Doesn't matter, really, but let's keep it. And now I will do the other one, it will conflict. All right, here we are. And now what I like to do and what Anne likes to do is instead of git merge, uh, sorry, I did already merge. Instead of now editing the file directly with the editor, I can do git merge tool. Merge tool. And this, this can be connected to a visual comparison tool like meld maybe we should add uh, um, something about the configuration in the hackmd we have it in the carpet in the code refinery uh, I just don't know how to resize it. so here you are using uh, yeah. meld and i'm using p4v on windows because it's easier to install but any of these tools are working very well Okay, I'll do like this. I don't see the third version, the middle one. Oh yeah, okay, so it's yeah. because it's too long. Yeah, so some, some resizing problem, but yeah. it was, uh, what is beautiful here is that it shows me on left is my current branch, on the right is the other branch, so theirs. So left ours, right theirs, and in the middle is the result. What I like about it is that it shows the lines that are not conflicting, they are in green. And OK, this is a simple example, but this is so nice that I can scroll up and down. And here I can decide which one I want with these. Maybe the arrows are tiny, but with the arrows, I can decide. So here we want the lemon ice cream. So let me click on, on this arrow. And I can co resolve conflicts visually by scrolling through files. And I can here. And once I'm happy, I can save it. So this is now the screen, but quit, save, yes. Sorry, now I need to go back to, and what happened now, get status. And now that I resolved it in Melt, it also staged it for me. So I don't need to tell Git now explicitly that I resolved it and I can now Git commit and we are back to, and we are done. So that I use a lot. We when wanted... you have many conflicts, this is really very nice. Sorry, by the one. Because mm -hmm. it's usually very hard to uh, go through the file with an editor, with a simple editor. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show you also ours and theirs, but I will do it quicker and I will just reclone to create the conflict that again. Well, let's do. Let's do it like this. I will now do origin directly. Improve starters. Yes, and improve the certs. No, I don't want to do that yet. I wanted to show before I do this uh, that there is a way. If you know that I whatever conflict happen, I want to keep our current version or the other branch then I can do something like that. And then it will hopefully not ask me for to do conflict resolution. So when do you do that? Um... Um, yeah, good question. Not very often. 
yeah, I don't use it very often either. Like normally I would open it up and then meld or in the thing, look at it and just, I can decide which one mm -hmm. it is. But we could use it, I mean, as you said before, uh, normally when you have the branch improved desert, you don't expect to change other files. So you, you mm -hmm. can use this kind of strategies in that case, because mm -hmm. you know that the, the new branch is always the one you want to take, because it shouldn't be a conflict. And if there are any conflicts, this is the latest version, like improved desert. I mean, at least this is how we use it. Yeah, so I, I have used it sometimes for when I created two branches and I implemented something. So I had an idea and I did some, I did a lot of work and then I had a completely different idea and I did a lot of very different work. And and then then after, after a lot of work, I re realized which one was the better one. And then I didn't care anymore about the other one and I didn't want to go through 20 files and decide so Which then, ones, then yeah. I would use it. So it's like something where you knew, you already knew very well yes. what was in both sides. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this so requires actual knowledge. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. the last one. Yes. And does ours and theirs only do the conflict areas? Or what about if there's unrelated commits no, in one as, of the branches that? No, as far as I understand, it will merge as a like a normal merge, normal merge. but when there, whenever mm -hmm. there is a conflict it will take the mm -hmm. the the one version or the other version mm -hmm. actually before let me verify that this is really happening yeah uh, so here i took the other one and we got the lmni mm -hmm. screen and uh, we will also see the hours and theirs on gitlab gitlab has it i think GitHub doesn't really show you that so we have 20 minutes left. Let's try to resolve conflict on. Let's on try to on the web. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to GitHub. And I, I, pre I prepared the same repository. I just don't want to mess it up here. So I prepared it on my namespace also. So here I can mess it up. It's the same thing. And what I will do now, just to have a conflict, just to keep it simple, I will merge one of the branches into the other. I could also first merge the main and then the other one, but just to make it faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, where is the merge commit? Merge request, pull request. Hey, here, pull request. So let's create a new pull request from. Uh, from improve the sets to improve starters. Mm -hmm. uh, it also tells me yeah. that it cannot. Well, don't worry, you can still create a pull request. Good. So is this basically telling you that it's going to conflict? Yeah. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. It shows already quite a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. But let's Same go ahead where... anyway. Uh, let's create a pull request. And the pull request cannot be has conflicts, must be resolved. And either command line or web editor. And we can do it here in the web editor, resolve conflicts. If you click command line, does it I think it tells okay. you, it tells you which what to do. Yeah. yeah, it tells you, but doesn't like do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I never tried that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the web editor is quite nice. Yes. So is it uh, available for any kind of conflict, or is it when you have very simple conflicts? So I um, oh, it always worked for me. I haven't tried it like when when you no. merge, I don't know, one video file into another one. Or, and oh, then, yeah. So I haven't, I haven't seen a case where it didn't work, but I'm... Yeah. So it's, it, because here you have a nice interface too. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I guess it basically shows the same thing as the command line. So anything that yeah. can be merged there. So like, as long as it's not a binary file or something. And here I can do the same thing. So I need to decide, remove all the rest. Actually nice that it, it I like that it shows what I need to still remove, but 
there is something to remove. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I did the wrong thing, right? Yeah, it was you lemon ice cream. the wrong one, but it's mm. okay. <laughs> I could also do something different. But, and I see it sometimes in codes, yep. but I find it really confusing. Mm -hmm. if, if in the conflict resolution, something else is put, it can make sense. But uh, I think in this case, I would then write a commit message like why I did, didn't take version A or B, but I did something very different. But for instance, mm -hmm. if you have like a if statement, a condition, you could, mm -hmm. uh, in two different condition, you could have yes. one where you merge the two. I think this is quite common, at least I right. have seen it many times. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I think one should not change it to something very different surprising, but it can, yeah. So I, I'm free to do whatever I want here. Once I'm happy, I mark it as result. I still need to commit. So there is a, maybe not visible, there is a commit button. Because here we commit the, the, the merge. And now I can. Uh, so when so... you commit, you didn't have the opportunity to add an additional comment. I think I had, but I was too quick. Okay, yeah. yeah mm. okay. So there was somewhere I could have edited. So that commit um... is really making a new commit, resolving it, and then you merge the whole pull request next. Yes. Yeah, that's it. And I want to show you also on GitLab because on GitLab is something really nice. Uh, where is it? GitLab. Yeah. And we zoom out. Merge request. Let's create a merge request on GitLab. It's the same repository. So from which branch, source branch, um, starters, target branch, desserts. Let's go on and create the merge request. Let's do it. I already like uh, the name a bit better than <laughs> full request. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. better, better name. And where do I see that it conflicts? It doesn't. Oh, there are merge conflicts here. Yeah. yeah, I'm not super familiar with it. And let's see what happens when I do this. I don't try. Okay, it gives me some info. In some hints. So it's yeah. a bit like on GitHub. The yeah. usual. But this is beautiful here, resolve conflicts. Let's look. Ta -da. You can do side by side. That's nice. Oh, you yes. can do also yeah. in line. Yeah. I also I like that. We had this mod on GitHub too, but I, I, I didn't find it when you did it. Mm -hmm. mm. And what is also really nice is that I can, it has this use ours and theirs. So I, I don't actually have to go into the editor. I can just click here, I want this, I want that. Let's do this. So it's I guess. a bit uh, like the P4V, it has yes. more of this. this. Mm. Yeah, so it's like a visual, I, I can also go in and edit. So then it will look like on, like we are mm, yeah. interactive, use theirs. And here I can this edit message. Oop. And nice. then I can commit. And then it's all, all good. Let me forget something. So we, we've seen it with the editor, with a visual, or with a merge tool, with on GitHub, on GitLab, we've seen theirs and ours. Yeah. Um, we can talk about rebase, which I actually mm. promised to do. So we should, yes, we should briefly show what that is and how, how it works. But should any any other questions before? Oh, also, if there are are there any questions, then I can be you know, look. So we really encourage questions, comments. Oh, and this one is already a long question and it's answered. Excellent. So more questions welcome. Um, there is an alternative to Git merging, and it's called, called Git Rebase. 
and I want to show you super, super briefly what read base is. So in a merge, we merge two branches and create a new merge commit. But in a rebase, we don't create a new merge commit, but instead, imagine cutting off this branch over here and moving the three commits, b1, b2, b3, at the end. So we, we really move commits from one branch behind another branch. And it's, it's a different way of combining two branches. So the effect is the history is linear, but also the commits actually get modified. So we create new commits. So the Do commit we create hashes. conflicts? So then can it, can it help for conflict resolution or not? Yeah, and that's a great question because I think it doesn't. Because one could expect that, well, if I don't feel like dealing with merge commits, let's go for rebase. Mm. So a rebase is not a free ticket out of conflicts, meaning that if, if there is a conflict with merging, there will also be a conflict when rebasing. But they will look a bit different because the conflicts, if I have several conflicts, they will, in different commits, they will appear one after another. They will not all appear together. Maybe we can try. Yes. Because this will also demonstrate, uh, this will also demonstrate what, uh, what well, what a rebase is? Let's try the same same thing again. Git and now let me check out again these two branches. Improving status, improving desserts. Git graph. Okay. And now let me. I'm switching to the improve starters branch. And I want to move it behind main, git rebase main. What will happen here is that these three commits will be moved behind this commit, git rebase main. And, th and this will not conflict, successfully rebased. So this is exactly what we did before, but the graph will be different. Exactly. So the graph now looks already slightly different because um, more linear. Yes. These three these three commits, we move them over here. Mm. And the hash is changed. So if I would compare the hashes, I will not do it now, but there are, these are new commits. But with the same same changes. And now what I can try is I can switch to the other branch, improve the sets. And maybe let me first rebase it on master because this will be interesting. Git rebase master, no, sorry, not master, main. You had a typo in a, when you change. No? You check out oh, this and improve this. Thanks. Here we go. So I move now the desserts at the end of, I move them a bit back. So where are they now? They are over here. And now I move, I want to move the desserts behind these commits. Git rebase. And I expect the conflict. And indeed there is one. And how we deal with it is now slightly different. Again, git status, it will show me that both have modified the file. If I want to see how, it looks like before. But the way to deal with it is a bit different now. So it tells me um, I should actually I should resolve it like, like we did it before. So I decide I want to get this one. Is it the one that I want? Yeah, why not? And I should add, I should stage the file. So this, I got the hint over here. But now there is no committing. I should do 
git three base continue. So that, that's a bit different. So I'm continuing the rebase because the rebase stopped. It stops at a commit. I need to do something about it. Now it will continue. And why is this here now? Hmm. <laughs> this, I'm not sure I expected this one. Which part did you not expect? Why do I see, why does it ask me for commit message? Mm. So it pre-fills it, it with the, so oh, yeah, right. it pre-fills it with the existing commit message. So yes. if you save, it uses the same one. Yes, right. And now we are good. Mm -hmm. If I had several commits, it would stop at the next commit. And I would do the same thing and it would stop at the next. And now if I do git graph, I got, I still have these origin branches, but if we look at only yeah, the local branches, very linear. Yeah. they are all like lined up one after another. Mm. So this is conflict resolution in a rebase. So is it better? Is it, uh, when do you use uh, a rebase? When do you use uh, a merge? Any advice? Is so it for sure. preference? Mm. Mm. So for me, I always, well, first, if there's going to be difficult conflicts, I will do a merge and not deal with the rebase because for a rebase, every time you, like, it's possible that if you rebase multiple commits, then it, then you have to resolve the conflict for every one of them. And that's annoying. But assuming that's not the case, I'll rebase my own branches before I make the pull request or before it gets merged. And then whenever I'm merging things that are either from someone else or public, then I'll use merge to not affect other people's history. Um, yeah, that's a good tip. Actually. Yeah. Like if it's about me, then I want it to be as linear as possible and as like you know i don't i don't want to see it as branches if aren't needed but if it's other people then they've been made it's a fact of life accepted and same for me once other people start working on the same thing has anyone ever kept a long running fork of something yes yeah so there, there might be some upstream project and it's being, it's continually being developed and you have some changes which can't go into the main one. So every so often when you keep things up to date, I'll take my changes and rebase them onto the upstream to basically not keep this old history that doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and once you start getting conflicts there, it gets really annoying when you have to resolve them over and over and over again. Mm. And maybe we can talk about, so how, how can we avoid conflicts or minimize them? Mm -hmm. So a few things I wrote down here was communication mm. with other people. So we need, we may, sometimes we need to coordinate. Um, I mean, Git helps us a lot with combining changes in the same file, but sometimes we need to coordinate. Also, it can help to keep branches focused. So if I'm working on the certs, I should maybe work only on the certs. And then I don't risk um, colliding with the other person working on starters. And That's a very good practice. I think I, I think we should uh, always encourage to do that. Yeah. And also, um, to, let's try to do one thing and one thing only on a branch. Not mm. It shouldn't be a three-year a three PhD project. Yes. on one branch because then mm. it's asking for conflicts and also they should be short-lived so if i have a branch and i'm branching out and i'm working on it for five years and i never update never rebase never merge i mean it will probably yeah. be very different so what is a uh, suggestion if uh, if your development uh, if they take a bit of time and you cannot you don't want to merge in the in the main yeah. because it it will break it how yeah. do you do that but what are your suggestions 
I guess that's almost like a long running fork. So in that case, what I would try to do is every so often, so I'm doing stuff, someone else is doing stuff, and I'll try to rebase my stuff onto the default branch often. So at least I can resolve the conflicts sooner rather than later. And if it's a syntax conflict, I can, well, you know, resolve it and then it's done. If it's a semantic conflict, like I need to fundamentally change some algorithm different than something else, then, well, I have to really think about what I'm doing because that will stay running for a long time. I mean, it, it's just it's a kind of thing that can happen when you do your PhD. Yeah. You can take a code and you start to develop, mm -hmm. your, and your main development, if the main developer is, or in the main room, they are not aware yeah. of your changes. Mm -hmm. I have seen very often, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. usually your changes get lost. Yeah, and that's a giant mess. Like if you take it yeah. and you do something where there is no way to resolve it, then you've made a fork and you're not going to be able to resolve it anytime and you have to communicate. So importance to communicate at an early stage mm -hmm. and maybe to communicate in between if your development are taking yeah. a lot of time. No? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if conflicts happen also to resolve them early, it's a bit like with, I mean, conflicts human. In, the, in the human, it's got to not let, let them just sit, but resolve mm -hmm. it. It, they won't get better over time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so about keeping branches as focused as possible, do you think this is a side effect or the benefit, the real benefit is keeping them short lived? So if I have, oh, okay, so my thought would be focused is good because it makes it easier to understand. But if I make a focus branch and then if I make a hundred focus branches, sit on them for a year and then try to merge all of them, yeah. that's not necessarily better. So when it's focused, that means you can merge it faster. And also if it's focused, if there is a conflict, you can deal with just one topic at a time and not have, have to deal with merging, say, one algorithm and making it work together at the same time as dealing with 10 other changes that don't conflict and thinking about them. And that goes to this other thing I added here, pull before you do new work. So what was that I said in code refinery? Something like you want delta t and delta changes to be as small as possible. Like I, oh, what was it? So if you if you don't want to resolve conflicts, then keep your changes open as little as possible. So if you pull right before you work, you make your change quickly, and then you get it merged, whoever gets it merged first is not the one that has to resolve the conflict. And this is a happy circumstance because when everyone does this out of their own self-interest, the number of conflicts goes down because everyone's working on the same thing. It's a happy point where everyone doing the selfish thing leads to the better outcome. Uh, what I also found useful was if we think about these focused branches, so let's say you have a focused branch A and a focused branch B, and they are very focused. They do one thing only, but you want, you want to test them together because sometimes you need to. You need to, is this, is this feature A working well with feature B? And you may be tempted to, well, let's just merge A into B. But now you've got two, I mean, one of the two branches now got a lot less focused, right? Because it come, and that wasn't mm -hmm. very clear to me. So, so what I find more practical these days is to, if I want to test them in combination, I create a third branch and I merge two A and B into the third branch, I test it. And the third branch I can throw away again. But I didn't dilute branch A and B, if that makes sense, what I said. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I think yeah. this is usually the best strategy when uh, you have large uh, code contribution, especially like scientific contribution, because you want to test, for instance, that A and B 
altogether doesn't uh, affect your scientific results. Because sometimes you can make a change and they don't conflict, but uh, scientific results is, uh, is not correct or is not what you expect when they are together. So it's a very good strategy, what you suggested. And that can even be done every night or every week or mm -hmm. on every commit so that we we develop them separately, but we test them regularly together. Yeah. I guess if you are doing small things like fixing typos, then either it's fixed or not. It might be fixed in a slightly different way, but that's fine. You can just ignore one of them. But if you have two people that decide to spend a week rewriting the same file, then it doesn't matter what you've done. You've duplicated work and you're going to lose no matter what. So you really have to mm, like the bigger the change you do and the longer it will be open, the more you have to communicate. And that's the value of someone that has the broad overview of what's going on. And coming back to the text that we had at the beginning, I would like to point out, uh, like again, when to expect a conflict and when not to expect, maybe when not to expect. So it's not a problem to what uh, if two branches or two people modify the same file, because sometimes there is a misunderstanding that that Git would not let us modify the same file. So that is most of the time not a problem. It's only really about modifying the same lines. Also, another maybe typical misunderstanding or would be that Git doesn't look at the timestamps. So it doesn't look that if, if on one branch it was modified on a Monday and on the other branch modified on a Tuesday, it will not assume that the version on Tuesday was the one that should be kept. So it's not like a collaborative document where the last edit is the one that survives. It, um, and maybe also one, one situation where not to expect a conflict is if the same line is modified in two commits, but the commits, like the one commit is an ancestor of the other commit. So if you look at a Git graph like a family tree, so if the commits are siblings or cousins, there can be conflict. But if, if one commit is the grandparent of the other commit, uh, then oh. Git doesn't look at conflicts because it will assume that, well, you did the change later. Yeah, I mean, one, based on the history. one is already incorporated into the other one, so. Exactly, yeah. Like... And it may sound obvious, but it, uh, it, is, yeah. it is sometimes surprising. Also, well, I don't know if it should be obvious or not, if you do the same change in two different commits that don't share the same ancestor, Git will say, okay, it did the same thing and just take, like there is no choice there. Like if two people make two different pull requests that fix the same typo in the same way, then there is no problem. I mean, all in all, I experience conflicts a lot less than I might think, even though I'm doing a lot of stuff with the same people. And when I do experience them, it's usually not that hard to figure out because I look at what the changes are, figure out which one I want to start with, and then take the differences from the other one and bring it into the new one. But would you suggest, for instance, to have like code review for any conflict? I mean, I have done many times this mm -hmm. for scientific codes, because sometimes a conflict, if you are the maintainer, mm -hmm. you cannot decide which version to choose. So you would invite scientists for the code review, yeah. and they would argue which scientific result is yeah. the best <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I mean, like a, a normal uh, paper review, but yeah. with a code. I mean, to me, that's not a question of code review, but of science review, because there is science in the code. Yeah, and like, exactly. you know, 
yeah, yeah like you're right because normally either. you need to show evidence uh, with the results you, so you cannot only have the review of the code you need to mm -hmm. have the review of the results yeah. yeah and then you have all the tools to do each one separately and test it exactly. and then together yeah. and you know yeah i'm not screen sharing anymore right because at some point i think I've, my screen share fell off or am i still no you, you are, are not screen not. sharing but uh, that's good yeah. i don't think you wanted to share yeah, it was a good timing then. Yeah. <laughs> so, any yeah. other questions? Yes, I think we actually managed to show many things. Questions welcome. We will put these notes on the website. Also, we will try to better communicate when the next stream is because we realized that uh, we forgot to even indicate the time. Yeah. Okay. Well, Thanks a lot, and I guess we will see everyone whenever we go next. If you have any requested topics, please write them in HackMD so we can consider it. Otherwise, we'll be back whenever we feel inspired. Thanks so much for listening and watching. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Yeah, thanks for questions. Bye.